Hello and welcome back to Tinker's Toy and Hobby. Today we are going to be discussing whether or not vending is a sustainable business venture year-round. If you are enjoying the Golden Girls pajamas, they actually are not mine, they're Michael's, um, but it's my day off so I am fully committing to the role. So the reason why we're discussing this today is because we are in the slow season. For us, the slow season is the school year. We've already seen a little bit of a decline in our sales and for whatever reason they're trickling back up. So I'm not sure if that was the first initial week of school that impacted our sales and if maybe we're gonna be going up from there or if it's something that will continue to kind of waver throughout the year. But whether or not you have a slow season kind of depends on what kind of business you are running. So obviously if you've seen our channel you know that we run a novelty vending business that mostly focuses on toys and candy and recently like game machines. And obviously the general audience for those machines is children. Most adults aren't going to walk into a store, see a quarter machine for sticky hands and be like oh I, I need one of those in my life. We mostly cater to children and we really enjoy doing it so that's not really something that's going to change in the near future at least as far as we're concerned if you mostly place machines in you know office spaces that have year-round employees or airports i'll say i know year-round they don't get like super busy holiday business but you know you still have people traveling to go see their family or go on a business trip or any number of things. Those tend to be very busy places. Malls tend to get a lot of traction for one reason or the other throughout the year. The summer doesn't really impact whether or not they stay busy during the winter. And you know, if you have a snack or a drink machine, those are year round options. When you're catering towards the novelty side of the industry, we do see a much heavier decline in sales during the school year. And that's because obviously your target audience is not out there using your machines. Now that's not to say that there aren't some adults that want to use them. Like today is a school day and for whatever reason, we've already made a little bit before 8 a.m. And I don't think it was children. <laughs> you know, whether or not you have a slow time really depends on the industry that you are targeting. So. I know people are a little bit iffy about discussing money, but one of the key things that we try to provide here on our channel is transparency. And I think it is very important to consider whether or not you can make it through a slow season. If you are putting everything into this business and you are relying on that business making a hefty return in order to be able to pay your bills and keep a roof over your head, it is really important to consider whether or not those slow seasons will impact you and whether or not you can make it through those th slow seasons. So in terms of, you know, what we're experiencing here in our own business, we added four or five new machines at the end of the summer, like towards the tail end of our busy season. And within the last two weeks of the summertime, um, with those new machines out, we topped out at our first $1,500 month, which was pretty good for us. We were really excited about that. And right now we are on track to make about two thirds of that during this slow month. So we are definitely seeing a decline. As long as we don't go below the 50% mark, I'm going to be very happy with what our business is doing during the winter. That being said, our goal this next year is to have enough machines out that during the winter next year, we're making what we made during the summer this year. So we're probably going to try to aim more for like large bulk racks and claw machines and of course, new locations. We're getting ready to get into the honor box game. As we mostly cater to the novelty side of the vending business, we definitely have seen a little bit of a decline. Not as much as we were expecting, but a decline nonetheless. So do I think vending is sustainable year round? It really kind of depends on your circumstances. It's not something that I would say, you know, get five machines and quit your day job. Um, it is a slow, steady progress to get started if you only have a little bit put out up front. If you have a large amount that you can put into this business and get like 20 or 30 machines out and it isn't going to hurt you, I don't think there's much risk in it. Vending is kind of what I consider a self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning um, if you get the machines out inevitably they will return you know what you put into them over a certain course of time. Now obviously whether or not this is sustainable during the slow times also depends on whether you finance your machines. If you are working a day job and you know all of your bills are covered but you know during the winter you have that payment to make on those machines and your winter profits are not bringing in enough to cover those machines, you may find yourself in another not super great situation. Whether or not it is sustainable really depends on what you need financially out of your business. We are still 
relatively small and we're obviously coming at this from a beginner's perspective so you know there's other people that are much better versed on you know the finance side of funding and we're just kind of sharing our beginner's experience now what i don't want you to do is to go into winter expecting that you're going to be making the same amount that you will during the summer because even other industries do tend to see a little bit of a decline during the winter and i won't say that those declines are as substantial as the novelty side but you under most circumstances will not be making as much during the winter as you will be making during the summer. One really good way to make sure that you are not overextending yourself with this business and make sure that you are able to cover all your bases, especially during the solo season, is you know when you purchase new machines, when you allocate what you need that money to go to, never allocate more than you expect to make during the winter. So if you are picking up five new machines and you know you're going to have a payment on those for six months until they're gone, never allocate more for those machines than you know you can confidently make during the winter. If you're just going into your first year with vending, this can be a little bit tricky and I always recommend staying on the safe side and <laughs> never allocate more than you are, you know, confident you can make. Um, always underestimate what you think you'll be making because you never know. Vending is a very, um, I want to say lucrative, but I know that's not the word that I'm looking for. Yes, it's a lucrative business, but um, it is an unpredictable business as well. And so you cannot always be 100% certain what your income is going to be. You don't have a regular clientele base. Sometimes people are just passing through and, you know, there can be a lot of varying from month to month. You have to estimate that you will have those slower months more often than you will have those bigger months. When you start to overcompensate and think that you will have those bigger months more often, that's where you start running into issues. So I do think vending can be sustainable year round, but I do think that you need to adjust your expectations expectations realistically and make sure that you know what you're expecting from your business isn't going to be more than you are actually making. Um, we've been doing this for about a year and a half now um, so we're very comfortable with the progress we've made obviously we still work our day jobs and we don't have very many machines out so we're happy with what we're making during the winter time right now we're excited to see this continue to grow um, and from a beginner's perspective, you know, as people that have put thousands of dollars into getting this started, we think it is something that is sustainable year round with the right expectations. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of an idea of what to expect from your vending business when it goes, when it comes to whether or not it's sustainable throughout the year and especially during the slow times. If you're looking for something that is more, you know, steady income, I would suggest staying away from the novelty side of the business because it does have a sharper decline. But if you are able to adjust your expectations to that decline, I think that is still just as lucrative as any other industry in the vending business. And you're looking at a slightly smaller investment. Um, novelty machines tend to be a little bit cheaper than some of those bigger snack and drink machines. So at least from my perspective, I really enjoy doing the novelty side and I think that it makes the most sense um, for us and for our situation and the fact that, you know, we we don't have the proper equipment to move those big machines, we don't have the proper finances to accommodate those large machines. Whatever angle you approach the vending business from, you really aren't setting yourself up to lose money as long as you find the right location. And that's really the big catch there. If you're putting a food and drink machine at, in a shed that gets two people a week, you're probably not going to be seeing a rollover income. But, you know, inevitably, if you left it there 50 years, maybe you would. <laughs> so hopefully this helped adjust your expectations. If you guys would like to see more videos about our vending business, how we operate, um, how we do our collections, please subscribe, please check out our other videos. If you guys want to know what kind of machines we use, what kind of product we stock them with, some of our favorite resources for vendors, all of those are in the description box down below. There's lots of places to start and there's plenty of information out there online. This is just us sharing our little tidbits, if you will. I still haven't come up with a strong outro for this channel, so we're gonna call that quits for right now. <laughs>